Well, hello there. I'm Gloria McGlunfer, and I'm back again with another big, neat in new scoop. And if you think this is the Vianetta of all scoops, you're wrong. This is. It's, it's, it's a triple scoop Italian and a Vianetta on top with a flick and some sprinkles. Today, we've got uh, Jeremy Cunningham from The Levelers. Hello, Jeremy. Hello. Huge hands. You're just showing off now, aren't you? Because you know about you know I'm a bit hampered, but it's lovely to see you again. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> I remember our time in Glasgow. How could I forget? Do you know I've had my hair done specially, but I'm I'm, I'm a bit all unnecessary at the moment. So I think we better crack on. Scott, you're going to have to take a back seat on this one, I'm afraid. <laughs> You're the bassist in the Levelers, but you're also a band's resident fine artist. You create all the artworks for the album, singles, T-shirts, and more besides. You're a very busy fella. You're going to do an unusual but arty uh, collaboration with Scott, but we'll get to that later. Now, me and Jeremy, as you know, Scott, go way back. I appreciate his fiery red hair, and in turn, it's an admiration for a lady with a certain azure blue hair, which... Uh, <laughs> Of course, uh, well, mine's Iona Blue, just like you'd find in the Book of Kells, isn't it? I, I, I've, I've done my homework. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you some probing questions, if you don't mind, so that the big needed audience can find out a little bit more about you. So I haven't been probed for a long time, so yeah, happy days. I'll be gentle, I promise you. <laughs> when were you first aware of your creative side? Because you are indeed a very creative chap. And who nurtured and encouraged this, if anyone? Oh, my mum and my mum and dad, you know, they, I've still got reams of pictures I did when I was a kid. I've got it in the Metway, actually. Yeah, I was just looking at some the other day. You know, I've got pictures going back right till I was about four or five. So, you know, I was always drawing, even before I could draw anything. I was always like scribbling, you know, like Doctor Who and stuff like that. Daleks. I've got loads of Daleks and sharks. And I've always been interested in underwater stuff. So there's loads of submarines and sharks and stuff like that. That's amazing. I know Scott's nephew is an absolutely, absolutely loves Doctor Who, doesn't he, Scott? He does indeed. In fact, to be honest, we've been trying to get him to draw something for uh, for something for this show tonight. We don't know whether he will or not because he only draws Doctor Who and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daleks are pretty easy, aren't they? <laughs> I could manage a Dalek when I was like five or six. Uh, well... Has there ever been a preference between your visual art and uh, your music? Uh, do you like one better than the other? Or do you like them both the same? It's both the same, really. I mean, the thing is, you know, I I would always thought I would be an artist. I never I never thought that um, music, you know, music was just going to be a hobby. You know, I never thought I'd be lucky enough to, you know, to make a living out of it. And so it's quite ironic that I spent, you know, most of my life training to be an artist and then ended up being a musician, <laughs> which I just kind of fell into. Who were your early creative influences? If you, it, either art or music, I, I'll take either, I'm not fussy. <laughs> I could give you both, you know, I mean, the, the Clash was the big musical one. I saw The Clash when I was like about 14 on the telly on a kids TV show and they played career opportunities, like all dressed in black. And I just thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen or heard. And then afterwards, they did an interview and, uh, and Joe Strummer said, oh, anybody can do what we do. And I went, I'm having a bit of that. <laughs> oh, cracking. <laughs> what about your artwork? Artwork is, uh, I'm really into history, you know, so it's like, I like my pre-Renaissance painter, you know, like Book of Kells, like you mentioned earlier with your nice blue Book of Kells hair. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I also really like American abstract expressionism, you know, from the 1950s. So when you kind of smash those two together, you kind of end up with what I do. Well, it's, it's, got, a, it's got an absolute cracking style. And when you, you do a lot of the levelers artwork and uh, that, that brings me swiftly on to my next question. I'm a real pro. Uh, when you're doing your artwork, when you're creating it, which comes first? Is it, the, is it a song title? Is it the album title? Is it the artwork? How, how does it happen? Or can be anything, really. Can be anything. Sometimes I've already done a, a picture, and and we start writing an album, and I think that picture will work, or someone else in the band thinks that picture will work. Other times, like Mark or John or someone might come up to me and go, "We want this kind of looking for the cover," and I'll try and draw that. Other times, I just think for myself, "Oh, this is what I'm going to do," and I do it, and I hope that everyone else likes it. So it's multiple different ways, really. That's all about being creative, isn't it? And do you do all your artwork at the Metway? Because that, that's your studio, the level of studio, isn't it? 
I do all the messy stuff there. I do all the messy. Like I do, I can do like lino cutting at home if it's not too big. But yeah, all the messy stuff and printing and everything all gets done there because I am, as as you can see, as you can see with me, I'm just the worst at making a mess. Well, as I was watching, I was fascinated with with the art process, but I, I did I did want to do a bit of tidying. It's it's just me. I'm a terror. I thought you might want to do a bit of tidying. But the end product, oh, it's going to be an absolute cracker for people. I'm, I'm quite excited, really. But talking about your lino cuts, it, it'd be rude not to do a shameless plug for the uh, the uncredited Jeremy Cunningham, because Scott's an absolute terror, isn't it? So I've got I've got this wee shot here. <laughs> oh yes. We've also got this one as well, but I'll, I'll show the I'll show the album. Oh yes, yes. She's an absolute beauty, isn't she? Do you have a preferred media in, in art? Do you, do you like painting better or do you like your lino cuts? Or does it just depend how you're feeling? Just depends how one is feeling, really, doesn't it? I mean, painting is the hard one for me. That's the one you have to really kind of fight your inner demons, you know, which is why all mine come out looking absolutely psychotic. You know, because it's better out, better out than in. Looking at the process of what you went through, you just you, you'll go over the top of things, and 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 just you can't go wrong. It's just adjustments and how you feel and knowing when to stop. A bit like me, really. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah, it's, that is that is it. Yeah, it's just it's just going over things and changing and changing until you're finally done. And like you say, it's the knowing when to stop. That's that's the hard that's the hard part because you can keep changing for your whole life. You know what I mean? You. That's it's so forgiving. It's such a forgiving medium if you're painting something. No, the hardest part is when you look at it and there's nothing there. That's the hardest part. And so, you know, that's why I, I always advise people the best. The first thing to do is just to destroy that empty space and just do something, anything. You know, make a few scribbles on it, and then it will start to start to appear. I know. I know. Scott's missus was a teacher, and and, and she had a, a lot of children doing the art lessons. The, the scary bit was, you're right, the blank paper, knowing where to start, knowing what to do, and just making that first mark and having the confidence to do it. Yeah. Yes. It's it's all about confidence, really. Yeah. That's 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 yeah. It's just that well, as soon as you've done a couple, you know you can roughly where to put things and. And yeah, then it's just a matter of just doing it, really. Well, you're working with a, acrylics tonight, and uh, do you have a I, brand of acrylics? I use the cheapest ones. <laughs> Let's come on to your collaboration with Scott, because he's sat there, aren't you, Scott? You're a bit... Oh, do you, do, Shall we have a little word from you, Scott? How are you? Uh, to be honest, I'm enjoying it as much as I'm sure that the people that are watching this are enjoying it, so it's all good for me. <laughs> you're a bit of a fanboy, aren't you? Because I've met him before, you see. I've got over my fangirl status. <laughs> Many a mickle makes a muckle. Let's come on to that collaboration then. Exactly what is it that you've done for us tonight? Well, I've basically done a picture of you guys. Scott has asked me to do. And, and basically, I was going to paint my own picture. I've got a thing in my head which I'm going to paint on that wall or a wall at some point. But it's but mine is absolutely mental and like dark and like I didn't really want to go there. You know, so I thought, oh, it'd be much more fun painting you guys, much more colourful and would cheer me up because let's face it, none of us need bringing down anymore in this current uh, climate. So I thought, yeah, I'd have a go at doing you guys. So then I've done a picture of the um, the main cast. Ooh. Actually, I say that I did the, the main cast, but not Scott. Oh, well, that, never mind that. Or I'm on it, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Don't give a diddle about him. He's, he's, he's on enough photos. He's a terror. I've been an artist museum like that Mona Lisa with the enigmatic smile, but less teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Venus with arms. Well, you can't miss him, can you? Well, it's been an absolute privilege to see you working in your own art space because, of course, we, we've had a sneak preview. We've, we've watched the whole caboodle. We, we, we binge watched. I get a chance to use a lot of, you know, really bright, bright colours. And, um, and, yeah, just basically get to slap a load of paint on quite a big wall and get rid of all my uh, get rid of all my frustrations and tensions like I usually do when I'm painting a picture or smashing a bit of a lino woodcut you know so but as soon as I got about a third through I knew yeah I knew roughly what what was going to happen I was just trying to remember all you guys' names basically that's that's the thing and then as I was doing it <clears throat> I was feeling that I was getting to know you all a little bit better getting a little bit closer than I should have done but it was fun. Hmm. Oh, I think, I think we'll leave that one for a bit now. So I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've gone a bit all hot and bothered. I think 
We're going to see you start the artwork um, in a moment, and then we're going to leave you to get on with things in your own pace and time. And Scott's done some technical wizardry, because that's what he does. He's done a bit of a cover of uh, one of the Leveler's songs, Shameless. Um, It's not called (laughs) Shameless, by the way. Uh, He's going to do that over the time lapse later on the show. Thank you very much for the first half. I've been Gloria McGlumper interviewing Jeremy Leveller. See you later. And uh, uh, Scott, well, we'll see you in a bit, won't we? Bye. Hi, it's Jez. Some of you might know me as the bass player from the Levellers, but I am also the guy that does all their artwork. And it's a pleasure to be here on Scott Dunican's Big Knee Inn. I'm going to paint a picture for you. Here we are at the Leveller Studio, which is where I also have my art room. This is the Metway in Brighton. And we're going in. I've also done artwork for Scott for the Bar Steward Sons of Valdunica, and I did The Devil Went Down to Barnsley and The Lady and Greg's. Hello, Scott. Put on the cover artwork by Scott Dunican, of course. It's just the way he is. Anyway, this is this is some of mine. Welcome to Metway. So let's go in. Paint you guys a picture of the big night in crew. Hi everyone. This is Jez bass player from the Levellers and also artist in residence. I'm going to do a little picture for the big night in. The big neat in. So, let's start here. This is the Metway in Brighton, this is Levellers studio. This is my art room. In all its glory. This is where we'll do a little. Oh, look, there's the last level of album cover there. And Sid. Uh, so, this is where we'll do it. Not much space, it's kind of got smaller over the years. Oh, look, there's my cat. <laughs> kind of got smaller over the years, so um, yeah, anyway, I thought I'd do a picture for Scott of his, of his creations. And, you know, being his canvas. Is expensive and we're all skint at the minute because none of us can work. I'm going to paint it on the wall. So, yeah, as you can see, here's the wall. I mean, I usually paint on big canvases like this. Here's one here. Look. So this is what I usually work on. But, can't afford that today. There's a couple more stacked up over there. Look. So we're going to do it straight on the wall. And our weapons of choice are acrylic paints, dry very quickly, and you can wash them off with water. Unlike these oil paints, which take a long time to dry and you need a lot of thinners and spirit, spirits and stuff. Okay, so um, let's get to it. Start by doing a bit of a, a whitewashing, so we can see see how much the camera is getting on. Actually, for the start. I might be retraining taking houses soon. <laughs> You can see how neat my uh, see how neat my brush skills are. Uh, how far are we going over there? See over there. Yeah. That should be enough. 
So the big knee in. I heard it was shit, but you know, I'm not doing anything at the moment. Also heard that uh, Gloria Galumpa likes a redhead gentleman. Heard she might ask me some fruity questions. Her news, her news thread. I, on the other hand, far too much of a gentleman to ask her what's going on below the camera. Wouldn't do that to a lady. The mum brought me up better than that. It's ready, I reckon. Start. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. But then, I never am at the start. <laughs> into the actual drawing part of it. I mean if you're really lucky like Scott's gonna speed this up so it's not exactly like watching paint dry. Once then you miss out on all my fantastic commentary. And how was I was gonna go on YouTube and listen to a program about submarines. But now I think I might just and ramble away. I reckon this is going to take me a couple of days probably. I usually do things like this in two or three seconds. Oh, I hear the noise of paint. Oh, I hear the noise of the young man. It's the young man. It's the young man. <laughs> With a scarf. With a scarf. Indeed. Come in a minute. I can't come in there. It's your... Oh, can you not? All oh, right, well, I'm filming know. in a minute, so I'll just... Oh, this is Pete. Right. Just, well, just oh. come in and just put your head in front oh, of the camera. Right. Just okay. say hello. Afternoon. <laughs> How are we all? This is, uh, this is for Scott Dunican's Big Knee In. Big Night In. All right. Have a... Well, and always have a good I'm, night in. I'm painting them a mural. On the wall? Yeah, I was on the wall, as you nice. can see. Nice. Yeah. Lovely. Um, I'll come back to you. Do you, do you want me yeah. to do some filming and things? Uh, well, just a photo, if that's all right. Yeah, OK. I'm just I'll, gonna... I'll put it up in the office, so yeah, just let me know when you've got bits. All right, I'm going up to the office now, because these computers gone down or something. Oh, again. <laughs> Get him off and running. Uh, yeah, okie dokie. I'm, I'm going to be here for a little while, probably, all so... Right. I think I'm always... Whenever, whenever, whenever you fancy. <laughs> That's Pete. Looks after them that way. He's a pretty handy bass player himself, actually. Rumour has it he's better than me. I dispute that, obviously. My cat loves him, though. My cat loves him. Because he looks after Gus the cat when I'm away. And my cat is very cautious. And uh, Pete is the only other person he really likes. Right, how are we doing? I reckon it's pretty close. I reckon we can. I reckon we can start on a bit of drawing out, a bit of drawing stuff. For the paint. Right, let's start with Gloria first. Seeing as I've just been talking about her, 
very ungentlemanly fashion. <coughs> Even more ungentlemanly, we only had one date and I can't remember what she looked like. Lucky I took some filthy pictures. So if you excuse me, I've just got to refresh my memory. Oh, that's her. Oh yeah, I remember. Oh, I remember. So, I don't know what colour. Yeah. I'm just going to go with this light blue because it's the first thing that's on the top of the pile there. This is just the colour to draw some stuff out, not the actual. Well, it'll actually, yeah, if a bit of it will probably be left like that. But I just need to get my head around what these guys look like. They kind of look like. There's your mouth, and then they just kind of go down in a body like that. That one. That will do. And Gloria has glasses. She's got a little nose. She wears red glasses like that, and she's got like loads of like spiky hair. So that will do for her. Just to let me know where I'm going. Fire. Not for the first time and not for the last time. So Gloria. Gordon. Gloria's wee nephew. Thinks he's a superhero. I think I'm yeah. I did think I met him as I was sneaking out of their house, but as I was doing the walk of shame in the morning I think he was looking at me with a, in an accusatory way as I left his mum's room. I think it was him. Anyway. Let's draw him. He's kind of... Basically they all look the same, don't they? Except some of them bigger, some of them smaller. Well, I suppose he would look the same as Gloria because he is her, he's her nephew. So there is a family relation there. And he's got a cool Mohican who does look as Scott says, he does look a bit like John Rolfe. He's a bit more athletic than John Rolfe, I'd say. John Rolfe knocking on now, isn't he? Goodness, he's almost as old as me. Alright, I'm happy with that. Morris, the alien landlord. I like him. He looks like he's going to be fun to. Uh, he looks like he's going to be fun to paint this one. Because he's green. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love green? And he's got loads of eyes. He looks like kind of the Loch Ness monster with teeth and eyes. In fact, it looks pretty much like one of my. <laughs> Could be, it could be um, a weapon called the word cover. That, in fact, is what I was originally going to do for this. I was going to do Gloria attempting to eat her nephew as in the cover of a weapon called the word. Leveler's album, which on the original painting, which you only see half of it on the album cover, on the original painting, it actually has a little quote on the bottom of it. With the, the big one saying I love you and the small one saying I trust you. Which is um Yeah, typical of me. That's probably why I'm single. <laughs> yeah, so he's called he's got three eyes and he owns a pub. And he's an alien. It's that so couldn't be much cooler than that really. And he's got fucking teeth. Which is great because I like doing teeth. I don't like doing eyes. I hate painting eyes. That's why none of my pictures have eyes. I always black them out because they freak me out too much. So right, we've got three. <coughs> we've 
I've got five of them all in all. I will stop, at some point I will stop just talking shit. But not yet. Surveys the hairdresser. You can only say hello and goodbye. Okay. He looks suspiciously like Gloria. I think I'll just do him down here. As he's a uh, he's only a stylist man. You can have a little bit in the corner there. It's your face. He's got red hair though. You've got to like someone with red hair. And glasses. Glasses are cool. Oh, there you go. Is it a vase? Jobs are good. Isn't it? The last one, uh, the last one is the coolest actually. It's even better than all the others. Percy the Puppet Wrangler. There's no way I'm going to remember all these names, is there? Can you see all of these? I can't. Yeah. Oh God, look at my hair. It's all over the place. It's covered in paint as well. Ah, uh, well. Wow. Painting myself into a corner now. I'm going to have to do him in this. Ah, I know what I'm going to do. God. Oh, I didn't go to art college for nothing, mate. I know exactly what I'm going to do here. Thought I painted myself into a corner. No, it's just an opportunity. Just a bit of serendipity. Might need the ladder. coming up here. I'm not sure what colours to do these because I've I kind of got photos and I know that they're, they're colours but when have I ever painted anything the actual colour that it is? It's boring isn't it? Right like Percy Puppet Wrangler, he's even cool, he's, he, well, I like him because he's got a tie. I do like a man in a tie. In fact, I'm going to do him shouting and screaming because he's got shades on too. I'm going to do him shouting and screaming at the other puppets because he is the puppet wrangler. And he's got these two like Loch Ness monster kind of bits there. I don't know if these guys have arms. I mean, they don't in the pictures I got. So I'm not. I'm, I'm going to do them without arms. So they're armless. <laughs> oh, fucking shut up. I was watching this, uh, I'm a bit of a history fan, as well as a submarine fan. I'm watching a programme about Hadrian's Wall, and Robson Green walking Hadrian's Wall. Fucking awful. This did not stop fucking dad, dope, jad, dad joke talking. And now I find myself doing exactly the same thing.
because he's going to be kind of screaming, you puppet scum! Do what I say, motherfuckers! I'm sure Scott doesn't allow language like that on his show. Sometimes it's better just to forget about the brush. Ah, just go in with one's fingers. All those years at art school not wasted. And there's some smart ass going, oh my fucking five year old kid could do that. And that is the whole point of it. You probably can. Right. There's our puppet wrangler. all the stripes and the, see the way I'm going to do this because I'm very classically trained in this department is we start big and then we work our way in so we basically block out the basic colours and then we go in and we do all the stripes and all the nonsense Gloria, she's kind of pink. I'd say pink is her uh, base colour. So I need to make us. I need to make us a pink. As long as I got some white here. I'm sure she'll add some red. Make us a pink. A light pink. A light pink. Like that. Gordon, I remember, is yellow. Based yellow. I do a nice bright yellow. Yellow red, I think he's got like a red cloak. I will do that later. The cloak. Let's get the basic shit. Basic stuff all blocked out. So I kind of roughly know where I am. Maybe I'll start remembering their names. See who else has got the yellow on them. got any yellow hair or anything like that. Use the rest of this yellow up. Yeah. Yeah, the vase is a bit orangey. Yeah, let's do it. I'll just add a 
tiny bit of red to the yellow. Make that an orange. The tiniest bit. An orange, and then we'll put, and then we'll add white. I'll just put that there with a white pink. But that'll be alright once I put the orange over it. Mighty Gervais. Yes. Or no. You always know where you are with Gervais. It's either yes or no. Now, I think there's another green one here. Yeah, there is. Our alien green friend, but he's a kind of different colour green. I might. I might see what green looks like in that yellow. Let's see if that's getting. Yeah, well, yeah, it's green. It's green enough. It's kind of like khaki green. There's a start. Bubbles, ears. Something. I can tell this one's gonna be fun to do. I can tell that already. Do their little noses as well. Oh, they're cute little noses. It's me, I'm so busy thinking about the big teeth and I've forgotten about all the cute little noses. And thankfully this is going to be all fast forwarded and so you won't hear my psychotic ramblings. And then when I've finished, I think I'll write big me in. I'll have him coming out of his mouth. Now it's all starting. Now, now I can see how I can pull this ship together. Now I've done the basics. Let's have a bit more background. There's a battle, well, just a white background is boring, isn't it? So let's just fucking use what we've got here. called me back. I don't hold it against you because I can be a dick. Ugh. Gordon you little voyeur. You filthy little boy. You keep touching that it will fall off. Especially with your superhero strength. Fuck. Leave that shit alone. I'm learning the names now. So base. Ah, 
Sing and Scott is going to be editing this. Uh, you'll have to listen to all this shit. As I defame your creations. And, uh... With my baseless assertions and accusations. So pink. And your sexy glasses. You are one sexy fucking thing. Us painters, we do have a bad reputation. as a gentleman. I'm sure the puppets would agree. Are they puppets? Do we know they're puppets? Or are, or are they alive? I don't know which way the show goes. I did see one that Scott sent me. It was good. I liked it. didn't see all of it, but I liked it. Like the bit I saw. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this, would I? I'd have stayed at home and sat on my fat ass. Like I have done for fucking months. I'm trying to avoid the fucking Covid thing. <coughs> fucking. Excuse me, eat that. Even I'm getting too foul now to myself now. I'm not on tour at the minute. Not on tour bus. Foul language is applauded. Right now I'm I'm now I'm getting into it. Now I know exactly where I'm going. Exactly what I'm gonna do. Only takes a little bit of touching up, so to speak. No. All my art college training was not wasted. Luckily Scott is paying me a fucking fortune for this. So I should be retiring for a little while after this. to live on the uh, ill-gotten gains that Scott has given me for making his puppets look like scary monsters. <laughs> oh dear. I'll keep, keep imagining Robson Green so I don't go telling all those fucking shit jokes. Hair's covered in paint, hands are covered in paint, the walls covered in paint. That's the only bit that's supposed to be covered in paint. That's why I wear overalls. Because I'm rubbish at keeping the paint in the right place. And now I'm getting even more on my hair. I can't bear to have it flying about all over the place. Growing my hair dye out too. I've got about four or five inches of just Terrible, shocking grey hair. But I'm growing it out. Oh, fuck it. Uh, right. Now what should I do? I think I should do the stripes really. I should start moving in. I still think the background. I'll see if I've got any paint left. Mm -hmm. Anything that's just left in the tins, I'm just going to put in. I'm just going to put it here for now. And we continue to do that throughout this whole process. So it's not just a white background. Also, this is like this terrible weather outside. So I'm working in here under artificial light, which is never, you know, what us artists, we don't like working under artificial light.
because it gives everything a yellow tinge. That's the main reason. So you have to kind of take that into account. When one is carefully applying the paint, as you see me doing now, I am one careful paint applier. How oh, Gloria! If you weren't such a foul-mouthed Scottish news reporter, we could have been something. We could have had something. Do you know what the main thing I get asked and all about my pictures? by like fans of the band and stuff is why are there so many drips all over your pictures and the answer to that is because I'm doing them fucking quickly and it's in the nature of the medium to do that medieval history and Soviet era submarines but I am a student of medieval history quite a deep in student of early medieval history and what they used to make red with back in those days was the crushed eyeballs of a very specific fly Also, the blue you see, if you're ever looking at old early medieval gospel books like the Book of Kells, for instance, Book of Lindisfarne, there's the, whenever you see the Virgin Mary, she's always painted a specific blue. She's always wearing a specific blue cloak and she had to be painted that blue by rule. That blue was more expensive than gold came, still does come from Afghanistan, a certain place in Afghanistan, it's a rock called Azure, and yeah, massively expensive because it had to be brought all the way from there, you know, from the Book of Kells right over to, to Iona, where we think the Book of Kells was done, which is the west coast of Scotland little island on the west coast of Scotland. Alright, so that's your wee little Gordon's cape. See, I can't even get into my phone anymore because I've got too much paint on my thumb and it's going fuck off. You don't, you're not the boss of me, motherfucker. But I need to see what colours these fellas are. Right, I've got red. Ah, oh, Gloria. Gloria's tongue. 
who could forever forget Gloria's time. Not to mention a sexy glasses. <laughs> she looks like a. Uh, she looks like a Michelangelo from the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I said I'd paint you a picture, I never said it'd be good. He's got a little mask on. It will be good, don't worry, it will be good. having to constantly refer to stuff. Oh, so used to just getting on with shit. Gervais, oh, I can't tell if you've got orange hair or red hair. Fucking got red hair now. And I'll put a bit of orange in it. We'll hedge our bets. We'll hedge our bets when I do the orange in a minute. Gloria. Fucking, I hate eyes, but I love tongue, as you can tell. Okay. Now, look, he's got Percy the Puppet Wrangler has a couple of orange tufts up here. Gonna give them a nice red base, so we'll do the orange over the top of that. he's been up all night wrangling puppets hard work puppet wrangling oh goodness goodness me puppet wrangling is fucking hard work almost hard to hate it. I wonder if this is the first time they've ever been painted or if or if Scott was had a go. No, they meant Scott was had a go at some point. Will you read my fingers? No, my phone will not read my finger. So, where am I? Gloria, Gordon. Oh, we're gonna do, we gotta do hair next. It's gotta be blue next, doesn't it? There's a lot of blue going on. Oh, he's got, oh, we got a bit of orange hair. Orange, orange. But I think before I do all the stripes and everything, it's got to be hair. What colour have I got on me red? No one's got a red nose, have they? No. Fuck! Percy doesn't even have a nose. And he's got shades on. So I might have to paint over my lovely red eyes I gave him. Or I might just leave it like that. He might shake it. That's why. That may be why he wears his shades, eh? <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Let's do some blue hair. After that, I might. And I'll do the orange bits. After that, I might just give up on what the actual colours are. Sorry, Scott. I know it's, it's terrible abuse of your creative vision. But you know, I came here to abuse. not be able to get the top off my blue. No, oh, where's the, oh, the elastic band when I need one? I just broke my elastic band. 
Oh, you're back, are you? No, just, just, just checking. <laughs> I don't suppose you've got any elastic bands, have you? Have you seen any elastic bands? I usually keep a couple, but... Yeah, I think I'll probably chuck them, because they come with the posts always got as wrapped and bound. Yeah. Um, I'll have a deep join right now. Uh, yeah, if you can. I just because I need to get the top off of this. To get the top. I, sorry, Pete. I usually I've got. No, I just right. did. I just broke my one that I use there, but I'm sure I usually keep more than that. That's all right. I, I just think. Let's check. Have a look. All right. Thank you. See, that's why everyone loves Pete. So nice. Now I'm feeling like a dick for sending him off on like an errand when he's got loads more important shit to do. That's me being a dick. So I'll use another glue for now. Gloria. Come to Papa. Oh. With your lovely blue hair. Oh yeah. I should really use a brush with it, shouldn't I? Oh, fuck it. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, I'm sorry, Scott, for my foul language, but like I said, it's all going to be fast forward. So, yeah. you can hear these fucking ravings of a mad person. Who else is blue? I seem to remember there's a lot of blue. Gordon, I'm pretty sure, has a blue Mohican. We said he looked like John Robb, didn't we? Or you did. And then you said you were too scared to tell John Robb. <laughs> As would I be, of course. Hey, they're artistic types. We're lovers, not fighters. And John Robb does look a bit handy. To the age of about 15, I was a boxer myself. Yeah. Till it got a bit too painful. I was like, look the face. I've not found one yet, but I've got the kind of face. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> To go home if worse comes, I've got some there. Gordon, your little eyes, your sexy little oh, I can't say that, he's only five, isn't he? Your very cute little eyes. So, yeah, I was a boxer for a while. I used to get the shit kicked out of me and beat the shit out of other people. Dad was a boxer. His dad was boxed for the United Kingdom at the Royal Albert Hall. And he was he actually lost that one actually. <laughs> but he was very good. Very good boxer, my old man. But yeah, my dad when he was alive, if he ever used to come into our house and you know, you'd see all these boxing trophies are up there and you'd uh, why am I fucking talking I suppose yeah I'm talking to you Scotty yeah. so um come into our house and then if there's ever boxing on like me and my mum would be like oh can't we put on a nice wildlife documentary and uh, my dad and my sister would be going go on kill the fucking gun kill the gun and they like they like their bloodlust. My sister used to play hockey. Come back beaten to fuck. And, you know, obviously she did the same to multiple unfortunate people. That was 
what it was like growing up and crawling around. Actually, you know what, my mum, <laughs> my mum's next door neighbour almost is Ramesh Ranganathan. And he taught my sister's kids maths when he was a school teacher. That is my claim to fame. Like going to the same school as Robert Smith used to be my claim to fame. Now it is that Ramesh Ranganathan is my mum's almost neighbour. And I tell you what, the guy is doing well because the house he's building is massive. Fair play to him though. I like him. He's alright. He's a good crawly boy. Oh, I don't know. I might not just bother with doing it. I might just paint all my hands actually. It's actually better. It's actually quite fun. Or maybe I'll. Uh, I might stop quite soon and do the rest tomorrow. I always like to stop before I finish something. I like to stop kind of halfway through. Then I take a picture of it and then I, I think about it overnight. What do you think, Scott? You, know, you reckon? Well, I, uh, you're crying it. Are you crying? What have I done to your to your beautiful vision? I think they're looking all right. I didn't mean to make you cry. I tell you what, this paint, I've got this paint in Holland that I'm using at the moment. It is the shittest quality paint. So I know you're paying me a fortune for this, and I shouldn't really tell you I'm using the shittest quality paint, but not all of it, just the green. Levelers did a big festival in Belgium a couple of years ago, and one of the organisers turned up with a with a canvas and wanted me to, well, asked me to paint a picture while I was waiting because we, you know, we were just sitting on our fat asses waiting to go on. So I obliged and painted her a couple of pictures. Uh, and this is some of the paint that was left over from that. In fact, I used one of the pictures as the cover of Generation Fear for Single. Right now, uh, he looks, Percy definitely looks like he's wrangling. Gloria looks as fucking sexy as I remember her. Gervais needs to be a bit more orange. In your face, Gervais. He's the only one I haven't done his eyes, am I? Oh, sorry, Gervais, mate. There's your eyes. I've got to do their little noses, yeah, haven't I? Gervais kind of drew the shit end of the straw. Stuck in his little corner. <laughs> the pig's still out there trying to find me an elastic band. I'm going to feel really guilty. <laughs> I hope he's out there doing something a bit more constructive. <laughs> he's probably forgotten all about me. He's busy making the Metway COVID proof. Like we have to, every day we have to 
even though the studio isn't open at the minute because we're on full fucking lockdown restrictions, um, we still keep the place all wiped down. Or I say we, when I say we, I mean Pete keeps the place all wiped down every day for those that are working here because we have a lot of small business works here. And so every doorknob needs wiping down, every surface. It's all in zones, we're all zoned. And uh, you know, as soon as the restrictions lift, lift a little bit, we will open the studio again. Because that's all zoned as well. It's the north. Oh, I have to be very careful because I have COPD which means if I caught the plague I could probably sadly pass away and I ain't ready to sadly pass away yet so kids just say no jump up and down on stage for an hour and a half. With the aid of an oxygen tank sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, good, it looks like Marge Simpson. Hopefully you won't when I've finished his beautiful stripes. It's alright, isn't it? <laughs> it smells great. <laughs> smells even better when I'm oil painting. <laughs> yeah, I love oil painting. <laughs> Thanks for that, that's very kind. I just needed to get the top off my paint for a bit of extra traction. Thank you. What an elastic man. That is why it's so lovely working at Mate Wife. Everyone here is fucking awesome. He's a guy that gave me the elastic band, he's John, John Bell, he's got a studio just down the end of this corridor. Very good he is, very good producer, mix engineer. And we like him a lot. I see the puppet wrangler, taking shape. Out of the green. Ah, some of them got blue noses, don't they? Oh, I keep treading in that little oh, Got no shoes on. And there's water all over the floor. My hair's all over the place. And green, probably. You can see all this picture. Can you see all this picture? Yeah, you can. Mate. Uh, I'll have to go back to the phone for a second. No way that's going to work. Okay. Chavez done got a blue nose. Gordon. I haven't got a blue nose. I'm going to leave the noses there. I'm going to do a bit of orange first. Uh, yeah, I think so. 
to do that, I'm just gonna, because I am quite lazy. I'm just gonna make it up. Oh, that's come out pink. Fuck it. Sorry, Zabaze, mate. What kind of studio do you call this without any rubber bands? <laughs> I got one, John gave me one, thank oh, you. I asked him if he had one. Is that, is that, will that do what you yeah, need? Yeah, 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 thank you, yeah. I just need it to get a bit of extra traction when I take the top off the paint. All right. It's a, it's an old artist trick that, you know, when you've done as many years at Bart College as I have, <laughs> you should always have an elastic band with you because you know the top of the paint gets stuck. <laughs> The problem is, you start talking about elastic bands, and then I've got that stupid 70s or 80s hit, uh, um, the elastic band man. Oh, I don't recall It's that. just going through my head. I don't want to put it in your head. It's <laughs> in my head. The elastic band man? Yeah. Sounds horrendous. I think it was a, <laughs> a, I think it was a disco thing. It sounds like that, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm imagining it like. <laughs> You're imagining right. <laughs> um, the guys, the other artist, the postman, so yeah. took him for a tour around and suggested some areas to him to oh, right, where okay. they could do things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we looked at the wall outside, which is the big wall. The big wall that's a bit buggered. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he really likes the idea of that. Yeah. So, but instead of painting right on the wall, they do it on these. They do on uh, photocopies, don't they? Well, they do it on. They mount it on something, so there'd be quite big mounts of each one. But they were wondering whether they could do you boys and have it as a. a well, that'd tool. be good, wouldn't it? And, and I, I thought, well, you know, yes. obviously you'll need to, to pass it with the rest of the band. Oh, yeah, man. No. Goes again, so we need, uh, you know. That's a good idea. A couple of pictures, and they do the same thing as they do with yeah. anything else. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get some. I mean, not. I mean, we'll use old pictures of us when we look good. What, what, <laughs> <laughs> like young levelers. <laughs> Come on, let's just go for it. This is what we are. <laughs> it, I think really it, it would look really nice, but again, if no, you, I'm, I think that's a bad idea. Job, so I, could get, um... I think that's a great idea. I think that's that's perfect because I I was kind of coveting that spot to do something on it, but having a picture of. A, Oh, band. Well, it's your band. It's your that, 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 so, that, yeah. that does it for me. I think the others will be fine with it because yeah. his his work is fucking good. Yeah, it is good, and it's it's very recognisable yeah. from round town, you know, from round Brighton. Yeah, and I think it, the, the idea of doing it the way they do it is is they they will weather much better that way. They won't. Yeah, you know. funny enough, you know, because I see their work all the time as I'm cycling. I was yeah. just looking at Freddie Mercury as I came up. Yeah, you know, he's he's at the bottom of uh, St James's Street. Yeah. And um, yeah, so well, let's do it. And, 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 and you know, they want to do it for now, so that's another good reason. Well, <laughs> happy days. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll text the others when I get home. Yeah, text them, see if there's any more that's come back. Sure, there's And then I'll basically I'll dig out the photos yeah. for them. I mean, probably what we'd have to do, and this will In be fact, the Charlie, Charlie yeah. thing, is I'll probably have to get scaff on that wall, yeah, uh, fill in all the, the gaping holes and gaps. And yeah. give it a, a kind of whitewash. Yeah. So, so that they've got a decent <laughs> starting point. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm, I'm I think that's yeah. I think that's I think that's a splendid idea, Pete. I think yeah, nice yeah. one. Well, <laughs> not mind really. It's just it's it's just those. Yeah, but you've been talking about doing something on that wall. Well, it's the little bits the of the building that, that I always think. That needs a bit of attention, and it does, yeah. it's shabby. A bit but, of love and, and, love and, and the, care. You know, the same goes for this corridor. Yeah. But, you know, this, this is getting a Same goes for this room. Yeah. Yeah, but no, same goes for this person. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it's a bit shabby and could do with a bit well, of attention. <laughs> it's, no, it's great, isn't it? It's like a proper working area. But this corridor should be clear of stuff. Yeah, it should and be. It should be clear. It's probably a fucking fire hazard. Yeah. The amount of. And now we've got. I think we've almost solved the uh, the flooding problems that we've had so many times. Yeah. But in the, fairness, I have been in here, and it's been pissing with rain, and it hasn't been leaking. It through. hasn't. But where you can hear it coming down oh, that pipe. Yeah. 
I mean, which is that's the cure, presumably. Yeah, this is the cure. Yeah, and you can hear it pouring down there because I came out because I was thinking, fuck, that's going all over the floor. Yeah, it's, and it, but, but it's it not. It's not anymore because we. No, it's good. Pipe. It goes. It just goes straight down that pipe. Down the pipe, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this wall is. I don't even want to touch it. Well, in case the whole wall falls down. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Uh, just, just tack it. It is an ancient wall. Yeah, it, it needs the attention, but you know that's now to all you do is Charlie with it. Well, the minute we're skin, aren't we? That's yeah, the problem. Well, that's it. You can't. You really can't do it. anything at the minute. You know, as soon as things start getting a bit back to normal, then we can. Yeah. I mean, there's so much we've got to do, really, and stuff like that, and other stuff. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pop upstairs again. Okay. Do you want at some point? How, uh, yeah, how long are you going to be in for, do you reckon? Oh, like okay, let's, let's say like 20 minutes and I'll okay. be done here. And then. Okay. Cool. Well, if you're done before then, just give me a shower and I'll just rush up and do it, because it only takes two minutes. Right. <coughs> I think you might have to charge your tenants a bit more, because if, uh, on preservation time, <laughs> oh, that, that didn't go down too well. <laughs> oof, oof. They don't want the rent up. They don't like. They don't like that up. On. We like to keep the rent as cheap as we can. Because we don't like paying rent all the same as everyone else. We don't want to pay rent. Right, it's almost time for me to stop for today. I oh, know, I've got to do orange before I stop. Fucking, I'm going to do orange. Just make a nice orange. See if I can make a nice orange. The orange is tricky, you can't just... Although technically it is just red and yellow, if you throw any red and yellow together, it can quite often just turn out shit. It has to be the right red and yellow. And I'm trying to make an orange that's quite yellowy side of orange, but I don't know, maybe that's too much. In it. You know what I said about mixing the wrong red and yellow? I think I've just done that. As they taught me to say at art college at these moments, bollocks. Why didn't I buy some fucking orange paint so I don't have to mix the gun? Pete's got to go and basically before Pete goes I've got to have my photo taken with him for stagehand. I've done a print of the Levelers Carry Me cover for the stagehand raffle and they want a picture for provenance so if I can try and do a bit of orange and a bit of dark blue before I go before he goes I should be happy and then I'll come in tomorrow and I'll do the stripes and all the details and then I might even do a bit of lettering I might even write a big me in Nice golf might even do that big me in for ya right there's 
messy. See what I mean? When you get the right orange, it's, it's good. And I now do have the right orange. The base, motherfucker. Orange. Orange hair with your base. Even though I can't tell actually. I'm going to keep it kind of red as well. Ready orange. And now this fella. Landlord. Orange hair. I'm getting to like Gervais more actually. I think he's quite a likeable fella. Man, a few words. It does look like Marge Simpson meets Susie Sue in this picture, not in real life, obviously. She's a lot more glamorous than that in real life. Uh, now, pub landlord. I don't know. I think he should have a full tongue. 
so he's got one now. So all right, Scott. I'm giving you a masterpiece of full time. Because it's my masterpiece now. This guy's got shades on, really. Percy. I haven't done his tie yet. Well, I think I'll do all their noses tomorrow. All their noses, but I should do something about his tie. That's quite a big block of colour I need to do it. I so don't want to touch my phone. It's got paint all over the fucking thing. Oh, my phone. My phone is suffering for your art, Scott. his eyes because I know he's gonna, he's gonna be wearing glasses for shades. Actually fuck it. Doesn't have to have that white eyes does he? In fact I'd rather he didn't. He nearly has. I'm sorry Scott. against the brief. Nice light blue eyes with Gervais, I think. You know, we're probably not going to see him either because he's got glasses on. in his hair like that. Which is pretty cool. Mm, I've got a lot of clean 
warming up to me. In fact, a lot of this paint is just dry. So I won't be able to clean it anyway. I just have to let it dry even more and then it don't matter. It don't matter no more. Once it's dry, it don't matter. And this is actually all those peasants who say that I can't paint because I drip everywhere. No drips on this motherfucker. There will be tomorrow though, I bet. <laughs> See, I can't remember Pub Lamel's name. I had it. And now I lost it. Anyway, I'll do all the stripes tomorrow. And, you know, the detailed stuff for now. I'm happy with that. Do you know what? For some reason. I thought that brush had green on it and it had red on it. If I was sensible, I would just leave that till it dried and painted over it. But it's annoying me so much. I'm going to do that. And that's the good thing about painting pictures. It's never wrong because you can always change it. You can always paint over it. See, that's why I've just painted over a whole load of shit on this wall. Because I thought we'd make a nice mural. Nice mural for Scott, eh? For the big meeting! I'll give you a few, uh... When we finished it, few close-up shots and the like. I'll take photos and all that nonsense for you. Because at some point I'm going to paint something over the top of it. Don't tell Gloria. But I will leave it here for quite a long time, I think. Probably. I've got my magnum opus to do. What I'm going to paint is going to be fucking monstrous. Like my usual stuff. Monsters are the deep, darkest recesses of one's fucking mental brain. Ugh. Better out than in. Better out than in. Ranger base. teeth this one. That's the game, that's one for tomorrow but he's gonna have teeth. I don't care if he hasn't. He's a pub landlord. Needs teeth. As does Percy. He needs teeth. Gloria doesn't. She's got enough tongue. We like her tongue. There we go. Right. I think that's pretty all well, there. Actually, no. Got a few little bits and pieces to do. Just to even it up a little bit. How's it looking in the thing there? Yeah, well, you can't you can't quite see all of it, but 
so you can see most of it and then I'll take some I'll give you a bit of a guided camera to it when I've done it I've finished it but you can see what it's looking like basically it looks exactly like it's not done it until I like to think I kept the vision man students out there don't do it like I do it. This is such a bad way of painting. Look, see what I mean? <laughs> I'm painting with pond scum, basically. <laughs> Painters Guild. I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon scraping off my phone. Oh, now it's shredding. The floor is covered in paint. show which is why Scott will be judiciously editing my segment but I like to think I have treated his creations with respect right fuck it that's last done for today levelers and his artwork that he's done for us. Oh, I'm hoping that you're enjoying what's going on so far, but I've got a few more questions. We'll, we'll, we'll get going if that's okay. Let's do it. Let's hit first gear. Yes. Um, well, no, I think I ought to get a bit faster than that, but we'll, we'll start slowly. Off we go. What have you been doing during lockdown? Because I know we've all been going slowly crazy here. I've been going slowly crazy here. Yeah. <laughs> It's like someone's put my life on pause, you know. I've been painting pictures, basically, and we're doing... I mean, I suppose I should talk about the Leveller's new app. I mean, that's what we've been doing, you know, because we can't play any gigs. We've been, we've been doing kind of lockdown sessions in our studio when we can, and we're just doing this whole load of other stuff on, on the app. You know, I'm doing, doing painting videos and stuff like that. And, and yeah, there's all, all kinds of stuff that you've never seen us doing before, really, on there. And it's been fun, actually, because it's given us something to do as well as keep in touch with people. So, um, yeah, levelers.fan.direct if you want to go and get hold of it. It's a free app, you know, so, yeah. 
have a look what's going on. We we kind of did big neat in as as a necessity of just trying to find something that we could do while yeah. we could do what we do. Um, and I think you know there's a whole whole bunch of us as musicians that have uh, you know that are in that group of people that are seen as unviable, um, which is a load of rubbish. Um, but you know we I'm free train. No. <laughs> you you can't retrain this and we can't retrain you that's not happening <laughs> well also you've you've done a is it a project you've done a comic book what's that what's that all about is it was it called base behind bars oh yes i do my comic yeah for this level is that thing as well i do my monthly comic which is like my uh it's kind of started off as a lockdown diary because people were asking how i was because i don't do social media or anything like that so kind of folks were wondering, you know, how I was. And so I thought, well, you know, I draw a bit, so I'll just do this silly comic. And the comic has basically got uh, sillier and sillier and more and more uh, surreal as it's gone along. But, yeah, it's quite fun. It's a bit like us, isn't it? Has it got Gus, your, Gus, your cat in it? Gus the cat is the star of the show, yes. Oh, that's bad. Oh, my furry squid. <laughs> that's a lovely pet. I thought you called me that. I thought it was just me. <laughs> that's, that's not two words you hear in the same sentence very often, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think I'll move away from that one for now. But also you've done, uh, is it right in saying you've done things like screen printing of T-shirts and you've raised money for, for the level as crew, of, of course, as Scott's touched on, have, have not had the work during the, uh, well, this this situation. Yeah, yeah, we've done all the crowdfunding. In fact, I'm just about to do another crowdfunder for, for people out, out of work in music uh, for the stage hand. I'm, I've just done a print of the Carry Me single cover straight off the original lino for that, which, you know, I haven't, I don't usually touch because it's so old, but I've managed to get a print off of that and that's going to go into a, a raffle for, for out of work crew, basically. So uh, I think it's 17th of February that's coming up about that because it's, it's a fiver to get in and it's a raffle basically and then you might you might get the uh the carry me cover i mean that's such a good cause that's amazing and really that that kind of links in with the whole level as ethos that you're all in it together the community and and that's what we've tried to do a little bit of during big neat in and, and it's just such a help have you had lots of reaction from your fans about it yeah i mean they like what we're doing you know just just to keep in touch and and, you know, they're kind of getting to know us a bit more, you know, because we've usually kind of said, you know, it's all about the music with us. Like, it's, it's not really about the personalities with the levellers, you know, it's about what, what we do rather than who we are. But but at the minute, we can't do what we do. So so we're all being who we are. And so people are kind of getting to know us a bit better and they, they're kind of liking that. We talked a little bit about uh, your collaboration with Scott, but who have you enjoyed collaborations with in the past, either musically or artistically or both, which is very difficult to say without teeth. Scott's got to be at the top of the list, obviously. Uh, after that, probably Joe Strummer, because he was a massive hero of mine, of ours, you know, and he came and played on, on one of our songs. So that, that, was, that was really good. I'll tell you who else, actually, as well. We've, we got to support Neil Young a few times and that was really good meeting him he was like a proper legend you know in fact I've been really lucky with meeting my heroes they've all turned out to be really nice you know thus far that's always a bonus because it'd be terrible if they were a shocker wasn't it but, <laughs> like Scott cool. jumps through the screen and kicks my head in at the end of this interview <laughs> oh, it, I'd, I'd fight him I'd fight him he wouldn't he wouldn't be allowed to it'd be terror you've been mentioning earlier about uh, being a bit of a medieval buff a uh, medieval history buff that is um um, what are you reading or learning about at the minute? Have you got anything on the go? What am I reading at the minute? Uh, uh, I'll show you. I'll get my readers on. The Hibernensis. Ooh. 100 pages of canon law from Ireland. <laughs> Circa 750 AD. What is it about the history that, that rings your bell? I don't know. I, I just got really fascinated by things I don't, you know, things I don't know about, you know, So, and I realised that I didn't know anything about kind of post-Roman Britain, you know, early Anglo-Saxon England and stuff like that. And I kind of started reading a lot of that and then that led me on to, to Ireland. Yeah, I'm just, you know, fascinated by it because I just didn't 
get taught anything about it. And I don't know, I just fell into it deep. You know, I've been studying it for like 25 years now and go to conferences and yeah, all, all sorts. You know. it's, it's lovely to have an extra passion as well and I suppose it's trying to find out more about the world around us and you know we're only here for a while and I'm not I don't want to get deep and dark now but it's getting as much crammed into that time as possible and understanding everything yeah true I mean you know the the, the, the kind of people I meet who this history stuff I mean they're all so ridiculously clever you know speaking and you know reading you know multiple languages and being able to to understand the original sources and stuff it's just yeah some crazy interesting people you know my history knowledge is not scott's all right but mine's not great i mean he did laugh at me the other week when i thought that joan of Arc was married to noah so that's kind of my <laughs> level there <laughs> after things get back to normal if they do get some sort of normal is there anything that uh, the levelers themselves have got in the pipeline have you got anything planned and i know you'd had some tour dates postponed and and, and your festival beautiful days is is there anything sort of on the on the back burner for that? We're just trying to get, I mean, those dates, we've still got dates penciled in, but it just all depends if we can do them or not. So um, we're just kind of hoping and praying we can do it this year. But if we can't, it'll have to move till next year again. And tickets will still be valid and as they will for all the dates we haven't been able to do so far. But, you know, we only have very loose plans at the minute because things are just changing all the time. It is what it is kind of thing, isn't it? It's just, yeah, we just got to deal with it. it like, like I said, it's like for me, it's like someone's just put my life on pause and, and suddenly we've, got, we've had a year and I just can't remember what I've done in that. I've done quite a lot in that year, but I can't remember any of it. It's just like a year has just disappeared, you know? It's crazy. One of the things that I wanted to talk to you about towards the end of it was that we do have uh, some very young fans that are new to art and I think I'm going to get you, if I can, to introduce the gallery in a little bit because we went all Tony Hart on your ass. <laughs> and uh, we thought, um, is there any tips that you've got for any of our young artists or, or not so young artists, actually? Well, my only tip is just the same as art and music. It's just to enjoy what you're doing. You know, if you're, if you're making art, just do the sort of art you want to do. If you're making music, do the sort of music you want to do because, I mean, there's no guarantee with either that you're going to get anywhere with it. So you just got to enjoy it for yourself. And, and the thing is, if you do enjoy it for yourself, often that kind of rubs off on other people and you find that you do start getting somewhere with it just because of that. So it's this kind of self-fulfilling circle. So I would say, you know, yeah, just just really enjoy what you're doing, believe in what you're doing and yeah, go all out at it. Just get stuck in. And, and I suppose that yeah. the other tip you had earlier was uh, just getting something down on the paper or on the canvas and not being scared of it. Exactly. Well, you know, for technical tips like that, yeah, just, yeah, start. That's that's the hardest thing is to actually just start something. And, you know, when I'm, when I'm ra rambling on, you know, when I'm doing that picture, the other, if you're painting a picture, always start bigger, then get small. Don't just start, start finishing one bit and move on to the next bit because, you know, you'll always have to change it. So always start big, get small, and it kind of paints itself that way. Well, you know, you've been an absolute darling. It's lovely to have interviewed you, Jeremy. And I I'm sorry we've not got much of Scott, but, you know, I don't give a jigger at the minute. <laughs> but I, I need to ask you one final important question. Um, being very new um, to, to Big Neat In, um, do you happen to have a favourite puppet? Well, how could, it, how could it not be you? It's got to be you, hasn't it? Oh, you said the right thing. That's great. It's our, <laughs> our, our, our former association... Ooh, I'm not going to say too much about that, but it's <laughs> lovely. I'm an artist muse and I'm, oh, it's all amusing anyway. Uh, would you just do me one last favour, please? Of course. W would you, would you introduce the gallery? Let me do it in my best, <clears throat> my best voice. <clears throat> and now it's time for the gallery. Oh, I've gone weak at the knees and I don't even <laughs> know the knees. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, Jeremy, for, for being a, an absolute hoot. Yeah, well, thank you. It's been great on the big, big neat in. I think it's a great idea. And, you know, I've watched quite a few of your shows now. So it's, it's a pleasure to be involved. Oh, thank you. The pleasure is all. Well, it's all ours and Scott. Scott, have you got anything to say? Thank you very much, mate. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Uh, even even though I've been kind of sat here, it's just been, it's been a little bit listening to you as well. And thank you for everything you've done. I'm sure that uh, it, the, the, the end product, whenever it, it kind of comes upon everybody's screens in a bit, I think people are going to be blown away by it because we were. So thank you. Thank you. Well, it's good night from me, Gloria McGlumford. And it's good night from Jeremy Cunningham. Good night.
And it's good night from Scott. Oh, he's still here, aren't you? Hi. <laughs> Hi. And now it's time for the gallery. phone to ask me to do this. Gold phone. If your band gets big enough, or if your band gets big enough to play at Buxton Opera House, you get given a gold phone. On this gold phone you can phone any other band or pop star you want to phone. Like I was phoning James Dean Bradfield last night and we were just fucking talking shit. Anyway, Scott phones me up on the gold phone 
and he says, Joe's, Joe's, I really want you to paint. I really want you to paint me a picture of a big neat inn of all the, the stars. And I said, man, I've got no money. I said, I haven't been out of work. I know you're a rock star, you know, can you give me some, you know, a bit, little bit, tiny bit of remuneration for it? So Scott goes, yeah, I'll sell. I'll sell my house in Bolton, it'll be all right. Now I know he doesn't, I know he lives in Barnsley, but he's a rock star, he's got houses everywhere. So he sold his house in Bolton, and that is why I'm doing this. But I've pretty much used up the 50 quid he gave me on the paint. Let alone the talent, hey, right, anyway, enough fucking nonsense. And Scott can beep out all my profanity, because I know it's a family show. He can beep out all my effing and blinding. So I thought we'd, yeah, we've got to do some stripes. And instead of making my phone completely destroying my phone, I've made myself some notes. Who's got what colour stripes? So I've made up some orange. Actually, you can't see, can you? Because that is filthy. <laughs> take it, take it, my word from it, it is orange. So now we've got to do some orange stripes on people. And who has orange? I'm pretty sure Morris. Morris says orange. Mm, yeah, he does. Come to Papa Maurizio. Yeah. That is what I call an orange stripe. Gloria. I know all about Gloria. Gloria's got some orange stripes too. But she's got lots of other colours. And if I remember rightly, Percy's tie is kind of orange. And blue. Let's just do a bit of orange over here. Gordon, I remember, is just blue. So now we've done the orange, and actually I'm going to do a little something up here as well. I've got a few little bits and pieces I can do extra. To base. No orange on your base. There's a lot of blue going on next to you, so let's get some blue out. I mean, Scott's going to fast forward all this, so it makes it look, makes me look brilliant. If you think that's brilliant, obviously. <laughs> Personally, I think it's fantastic. You can see I'm a master of the art. Those years at art college not wasted. For serious students of art though, see what I said yesterday about starting big and then working in. See, we started big and now we're going in. said we can always change stuff. Painting never goes wrong because you can always change it. I've gotten rid of Morris's forked tongue because I thought it makes it look like pub landlords speak with forked tongue. And I didn't think he'd appreciate that. Right, Gervais. What colour have you got? Stripes. Blue and red. Come to Papa. 
I haven't forgotten your tie either, Gervais, don't you worry, mate. What I have forgotten is where I put the paint. There it is, hiding from me. Start to do the noses and the eyes and everything, they start coming into life, then, don't they? I'll end up, I'll be as mad as fucking Scott by the time I finish this. And Amanda, because I'm sure she's got a hand in it. Literally, in a lot of these cases, I'm sure. Too cultured to make a joke about fisting socks. So I won't. I'm just reliving or living my childhood fantasy of being on Vision On in the gallery with Tony Hart. I think Tony Hart's the only one that didn't go to prison, didn't he? I hope he didn't go to prison, that'd be my fucking childhood done for if he did, as well as all the other naughty people. No wonder I turned out as disturbed as I did. Watching Jim fix it on repeat. Jim fixed it for me to be on the big knee in. Although she is a fine looking woman, not unlike me, she's got a bit of a gonk on her. And you know, us larger proboscist people have to stick together, man. because I can't be bothered to clean cleaning them. This is how we paint here, motherfuckers. We like to use fingers and profanity in profusion. That dark green is not quite fierce enough. Risk it. Risk it with a bit of noir. That's what us artists call black. And 
and I'm going to do a bit of, I have an idea for up here, I have an idea for up there as well as that one there. Right, dark green, who else has got dark green? Gloria, Gloria's got a bit of everything hasn't she, that's why she's such a perfect woman. Oh, I might not get her stripes in the right order. Oh, I'll tell you green as well. Surprise me, old mate. Your tie. There he goes. See, the face is coming to life. You two song. And this is a blue green. So there's going to be another one about there. And then you'll just fearsome and knees up a little bit with a bit of. This is the trick as well about using black, right? I don't like using black in pictures, unless I have to. When I do use it, I always mix it with something else, even if you don't even notice that I've done it. I always do, because psychologically, it just makes it less of a black <laughs> sucking hole, <laughs> so to speak. Perfect example of this that everyone gets taught at art school is uh, Constables the Hayway famous picture. In fact, they, they even take the piss out of it a bit in the film about Turner with Tim Spawn. It's a good movie. So check it out if you get a chance. Uh, yes, anyway, the Hayway is a massive, big, dark area. Famously, a big, dark area. And right in the middle of it, there's a guy with a red, a bright red waistcoat on. So you just see this pinpoint of red and that just breaks it up if you actually look at it if you actually look at the painting cover the red up it looks completely different it's that red that really makes it right Gloria blue
Right, so vase, what other colour? Oh, we haven't even done, we haven't even started on. Percy the Puppet Wrangler. Blue stripes all over. Easy. I knew I liked you, Percy. I knew I liked you for a reason. There's a reason I like it. I like a man who wears a tie. I like a man who can rock a tie. Now, I know he's got stripes all over his face as well, but I'm not going to do that. I like his face as it is. But I might give him some nice blue lips. And I'm pretty sure he has really dark blue tie stripes. So here we go. Dark blue on the tie stripes. couldn't do it, they told me I couldn't paint, they told me I was useless. You standing on the ladder now, bitches. Stripiness. Gloria's got red to go. What colour is your base? He's got a blue nose. Get in your base. Oh, I like a man with a good set of front teeth. Almost there with the mighty Gervais now. I might put some spots on his bow tie. I can't remember if he has spots on his bow tie, but in this picture he's going to have spots on his bow tie. See, we start big, we get smaller, we work on the whole surface at the same time. That's how you paint pictures. Obviously, you can't do that if you're doing a comic book or something. You have to kind of knit, knit away in the one place, but if you're painting a picture, that is the worst way to do it. Start big, get small. You're never going to fuck it up because you can always paint over it. But it's a very forgiving medium. Which is why we can go into it so fearlessly. That's the worst bit, it's the blank canvas at the start. That is the worst, that is the worst bit you're ever going to do. As soon as you started on that, as soon as you started making that not blank, you're halfway there, my friends. Gloria. Get in with your red glasses. I know a librarian, a bit like Gloria. I like a librarian. I spend a lot of time in libraries, me. I'm a studier. I'm a 
I'm a reader. I'm a reader of early medieval history. And I specialise in Ireland and I specialise in the Christian Church. Coming to Ireland in the early 5th century. At the same time as the Roman legions were leaving Britain. Sub-Roman history all also being one of my that whole early medieval period is my, that's my bag, man. But it means I spend a lot of time in library looking at books, going to conferences, medievalists' conferences. None of them know I play in the band, obviously. They just think I look a bit, they just think I look a bit funny, like. Sunny, smiley. Oh, the big neat in. Should be a moon, really, shouldn't it? In stars, because it's the big neat in. It's too late, I've done a sun now. Right, I'm gonna. I mean, we're almost done. We're almost done, I tell you. Tell it. What I'm gonna do, huh? I've got a few little bits to do. I've gotta I've gotta shore up Gloria a little bit. I'm gonna have to make up some pink. I'm gonna have to mix some colour. Oh, I should have an assistant for this. I'll just go make me some orange, man. They make me orange. Make me some pink. They make me pink. As you can see, I've eaten a lot of ice cream in my time. You could, you can't see over there, but if you could see over there, and I will move the camera at some point to show you everything. You can see that I have been. Pig in my life, but nothing gets wasted. So all the empty ice cream comes here to the Metway Studio to be used as my paint pots. Thank you. 
Now what do I do with my big brush? Oh no, oh, let's use another. Let's use another big brush. So when I school called Scott up on the big telephone, the big gold telephone. And I said, is it the big knee in? Or is it Scott Do Scott Dunican's big knee in? And Scott said it's Scott Dunican's big knee in. And Scott Dunican in massive letters. And the big knee in. Small letters. Because that's the kind of guy he is. He's a genius! He's a genius! So, that is exactly what I'm not going to do. Because I'm not going to give him the satisfaction. Gonna do is Get me punctuation right, eh? Right. Foolishly, I didn't write down who wears glasses. I know Trevate wears glasses. Actually, yes. Before I do this, let's um this black a bit better because I'm using black here but like I said I'm putting a bit of very dark putting a bit of very dark blue in it as well I don't know you probably can't see me doing all this can you I said to Scott when he said can you I really I want you on my show I said can I do can I do something like Rolf Harris I mean, not touch up kids, I mean, paint a picture. <laughs> paint a picture whilst talking absolute shine. That, um, that he can, of course, edit out my nonsense. Gervais, come into life, mate, come into life. Except I just effed it up. Doesn't matter, we can change it. But if we can't change it, just wait till it dries, man. Then we change it. And as an aid to drying, we got the hair dryer, which is going to be on standby. Actually, I say, I say that, it's not going to reach, is it? And I'll just give me a four way back to Pete. Bugger. Bottoms. Darn it. That's family friendly cussing. Who else has glasses? Oh, I know who else has glasses. Oh, I don't know if I want to do him with I like him like he is though. I might leave him. I might leave him. Because, you know, I wear glasses, but I don't wear them all the time. So, personally, he doesn't have to wear his all the time either. Boris, haven't done your nose yet. 
Are we stripes? Yes, yeah, somehow. Somehow when I was doing the green, I missed your nose, mate. Oh, I do apologise. Because you are one of my favourites. Right, they all got noses. No, Percy doesn't have a nose yet. Does he have a nose though? So, in this picture, he's not going to have a nose because I like the way he is. <laughs> right, so that just leaves the eyeballs there. And I know they've all got beautiful different colour eyes. But they're all going to be the same colour for me, I'm afraid, because uh, that's just the way I roll. And that's the thing. As soon as you draw the eyeballs, come to life. That's why I always leave it to last. Well, I, don't, I mean, I don't usually do eyeballs on my paintings. Like I said, they freak me out. It makes them look too alive. Right, we'll leave it. So we're almost there. We're almost done. From the big neat in. I've just got a few little detail things to us artists tonight like to do. It just looks kind of beautiful for people to look at. Scott Dunican's big knee in. I mean, if I saw this picture, I'd go, Yeah, I want to go, I want a bit of a big night in. I mean, those puppets look psychotic, but I'll just watch it to see if they killed anyone and ate them. They should be more on spring watch, shouldn't they, than on the, the big meeting. So, I hope Amanda likes this. I'm pretty sure Amanda is the godlike creator behind the puppets. So do I say puppets? Oh, do I say puppets? Do they have to say puppets? Or are they woodland creatures? Like on Springwatch? I love Springwatch and Winterwatch. All of it. All the watches. Me and Chris Packham, like that. This is where I wear overalls when I paint because I just wipe my fingers on anything. And as you can see, I'm not particularly. Uh, uh, I'm not particularly good at being clean, which is why it's good that I got my own studio. Because when I used to work in other people's studios, I was always getting complaints about me. Mainly splashing too much. That was the main complaint about me. I'm a splasher. And when you're working in confined spaces with other people, I can quite understand why they found me a bit irritating. Especially as uh, I was talking like this the whole time when I was painting. So I said, yeah, so Scott, can I be like Rolf Harris, but not go to prison and not do anything horrible to uh, little Gordon there? And he said, yeah, man, let's have a bit of that. So that is why I'm talking nonsense all, all the time. <laughs> Just in case he wants to use any of my beautiful commentary, and I'm not taking the piss out of him too much. He'll cut out with the bits of me taking the piss out of him, because he's a rock star. 
That's what they do. They set you up and they break your hearts. Never meet your heroes, folks. Tell you what I like, because I've met Joe Strummer and he was a gentleman. Neil Young was a gentleman. Didn't meet Johnny Cash, but Mark did. Said he was a gentleman. drips on it at all. Very few. Not less not, not less than normal. Stripes almost. Oh, Gervais, you would not have been happy. Scott wouldn't have been happy. He would have been, he would have been going, go back and film that bit again. Well, I'm taking back my Bolton house, throwing you out on the street. Like I said, he's nice if he's getting his own way. Don't want to mess with it. Just ask your face. He's the stylist. He has to face. And he has to face Scott in all moods. He's a brave puppet, I tell you. That's why I like your face. He got balls, man. He got balls of steel. I haven't painted him because it is a family show. Take it from me. Gervais has car sized kahunas. And we done love him for it. We done love that Gervais. In the face, Gervais. too fiddly now. I'm going to stop in a minute because otherwise I will yeah, I'll turn it into a bit of nonsense. Right, so I've got one last bit to do. Can you see what it is? Can you? No, fuck you. Almost did it, didn't I? Almost did it. Let's get an appropriate size brush. This is me. Yeah, I know. I know what it sounds like. That's actually me cleaning out a brush. I went to lettering school. All those years at lettering school, not wasted. I bet I spelled it wrong. Because unfortunately, I didn't go to spelling school. <laughs> Scott 
What do you reckon is that? Is that big enough for you still, you reckon? Wonder if I should give little Gordon a tongue. No, I think I'm gonna leave him like that. I think I'm gonna leave all of it like that. This is this is the hardest thing about picture. One of the hardest things, I mean, it's all hard, obviously. But gotta know when to stop. Gotta know when it's done. As you see, working on the whole surface. Always working on the whole surface. sometimes wear glasses but today they're not wearing glasses just look if you, had, if you had eyes as beautiful as that would you wear glasses all the time so I think we're done I think my work here is done let me just wash my hands off a little bit and all that I'll show you the picture, the finished article. Without getting too much paint over the camera. Start by doing a bit of a, a whitewashing. What a beautiful day, the king of all time. And nothing is impossible in my all powerful mind. It was on the 5th of November when time had went back. Some say that that's impossible, but you and I, we never look back. And wasn't it incredible? So beautiful, and above all, just to see the fuse get lit this time to light a real bonfire for all time. And what a beautiful day! And said I love you and Flynn said made mine a double jack Was then we planned the revolution To make things better for all time And when the virus said this crazy and ordered up a bottle of wine And what a beautiful day Screen every night. 
goes down without a sound But the generals, they were hiding at the ministers Well, they'd all gone to ground So I got a paperback, but you got the one with all the holes And what a beautiful day, hey, hey, I'm the king of all time It's a beautiful day And nothing is impossible in my own powerful mind It's what a beautiful day, hey, I'm the king of all time It's a beautiful day And nothing is impossible Here we go. Here's the beautiful art room. Here's the beautiful picture. Scott Dunicans. Big neat in. Morris. The alien pub landlord. Gordon. Glorious superhero nephew. Percy. The puppet wrangler. Do not mess with Percy, the beautiful Gloria herself. Gloria and I know each other from back in Glasgow. And Gervais, Scott's stylist, who has to put up with all that rock star bullshit. So that's it. There you go. It's the mural on the wall my art room in sunny Brighton. In fact, let's uh, turn the light off, see if it, oh, under natural light, it's a bit dark, but, under, a bit dark, but you can, better idea of it probably, have to wait till it's a nice day, won't we? Yeah, there you go. That's for you, Scott and Amanda. I look forward to being on the show in person. Hey, getting to meet, get to meet the guys, eh? Hey? Oh, look, my hair looks terrible, I've got paint all over it. There we go. Me and, me and the big knee in guys. fun. It was fun. I enjoyed it. So anyway, that little mural will stay there for a while until I do something over the top of it at some point. But yeah, it's quite cheery. Cheers me up when I come in. I might paint over the Scott Doonick in there. Just have a big neat in. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you, mate. I wouldn't do that to you. Right. Say hello to Morris, bitches. Ooh. I should have said, Morris just caught last orders. Much better.